Puppetet dashboard gives you remote access to monitor and control your devices from your tablet, computer, or phone. You can customize dashboards with the devices and layout you choose. You can even create multiple dashboards for each member of your house or to use in specific rooms. In this video, we will show you how to set up and access your dashboards and demonstrate a few of the basic features. Start by loading your Hubitat Dashboards app. You'll see a quick access link to your dashboards has been added to the menu. Now we're going to create a new dashboard. This can be done with this link here or through the dashboards menu. We'll give our dashboard a name and then we need to select the devices we want as part of this dashboard. Like it says, selecting them here doesn't add them to the dashboard yet, it just makes them available to add when we're ready. The advanced settings give you some options for using PIN numbers for added security and restricting access so your kids can't screw things up. So let's get into the dashboard. Use the local LAN link when possible as it gives you more options for adjusting settings and creating dashboards, plus it's faster. Okay, so this getting started box has some good info for, well, getting started like we're doing. So you can read through that, but we'll touch on all these things as we go along. Based on the devices you selected in the last screen, the dashboard will select a grid size which you can adjust later. Now you have a choice. You can select to autofill the grid with all of the devices we added, or you can add them manually. If you only have a few devices, autofill is the way to go. If, however, you have a ton of devices and are very particular about how you want them laid out, I would strongly recommend sketching out a plan first and then adding the tiles manually rather than trying to move them around after the fact for reasons that you will soon discover. So let's just autofill this grid and you'll see all of our devices are there in alphabetical order. Using this dashboard, you can quickly see the status of your devices and turn things on and off with a touch. When you tap a device, you'll see the icon doesn't change immediately until it confirms your light was turned on so you always know the status of your devices. From here, there are many ways to customize your dashboard and the individual tiles. To adjust a tile, click the three dots in the corner of the tile. You can move the tile around your dashboard using the arrows or by clicking on the square on this grid over here to where you want to move it. Green squares are open, gray squares, they're in use. Now you can move it to an occupied space, but when you do that, the tiles will overlap so you have to move the other tile. The same thing applies if you want to expand a tile. You can make a tile wider or taller here, which can be nice if you want something to stand out. You just have to remember, again, it may overlap with other tiles, so you may have to move something around. Unless you want it that way, which, you know, okay. You can also change the device in this tile to any of the options you selected here. You can change the template for that tile here too. For the most part, you'll want to use the standard template for the selected device, meaning if you have a motion sensor, you'll want to use the motion template. But say you want to keep tabs on the temperature in your bedroom, you can take your bedroom motion sensor and switch it to the temperature template. And now it displays the temperature in that tile instead. There's a couple other cool things you can do here. You can add a picture for the tile background. To do this, the photo has to have a web address. Then just paste the URL here and voila! For most of the template types, you can also select a custom icon. Just click here and select the one you want. You may need to refresh your dashboard browser before the icon will appear. Adding tiles is basically the same thing. Go up here to the plus symbol. Now again, you have all the same options you had for editing the tile. Now this time, instead of picking a device, we're going to add a clock tile here. So we'll make it wide to stand out. And there you go, there it is. All right, so you can adjust all of your tiles to your heart's content. Now let's take a look at how you can customize the overall dashboard. To do that, click on the gear icon. In here, you can change the grid size using these plus minus symbols. Changing the grid does not immediately affect the grid as it currently is displayed. What it does is essentially redefine where the tiles can be moved and where new tiles can be placed. When I change the grid, I now have more options for places I can add tiles, but nothing changes until I move the tiles there. You can also play with font sizes, icon size, and the gaps between the tiles and the roundness of the corners. You can choose any of these background colors, or you can add a custom image as your background. This is the same procedure used to add a custom background to a tile. Add the URL of the image here, and the magic happens. So those are your basic ways to change things up. If you go here to Options, you'll see more options for adjusting the size of the tiles. I like to just leave the column width and row height blank so my dashboard scales to my device. But if you have a ton of devices that don't fit on the screen very well, or you are building a dashboard for your phone, you may want to set the size to a number. 
These other options let you select what information is displayed on each tile. One thing I'll point out is this hide three dots menu option. This is nice if you have a dashboard being used by kids or renters who you don't want to be able to adjust any of the settings. Just turn off the three dots and don't let them go back to the dashboard menu using the logo and then they won't be able to annoy you too much. The templates tab here lets you customize how different tile types will look in your dashboard. You'll see there are a bazillion of these templates which you can read about in the dashboard documentation. Let's select the switch template and you'll see we can customize each state of the device. If we tap here and edit the on state, you'll see we can adjust the color of the icon and the text here. We can adjust the background color here. We can even select a custom icon. So then we'll hit save. Now this obviously looks pretty ridiculous, but if you put some time into it, you can make your dashboard look pretty sweet. Finally, the advanced tab. Listen, if you know about coding and whatnot, you can make adjustments in here and impress your friends with some sweet, sweet CSS. But if you don't know what you're doing, you'll probably just mess everything up. So let's escape here while we still can. So those are your basics for building a dashboard. Getting it to look perfect is just going to take some time and patience. There are some pretty cool things you can discover that you can do as far as linking one dashboard to other dashboards and that sort of thing. And we'll demonstrate that in a future video. And again, look at the documentation at docs.hubitat.com for more information about the different template types. And as always, you'll find good help in our community at community.hubitat.com. Thank you for watching, and thank you for elevating your environment with Hubitat Elevation.